you reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world. For the power of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when the signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from arousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that they catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times, and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good afternoon to everyone. Today we are beginning, or today is the start of the new liturgical calendar, and we begin with Advent. It is a time of preparation for the coming of Christ. In our first reading from the book of, of the prophet uh, Jeremiah, it is said that the day is coming when the promise. So there is a promise. And what is that promise? It is said that I will raise up for David a just shoot. So Jesus is actually the one that was promised during the time of Jeremiah. And Jesus is a just man. So if we want to, to um, so the image of Jesus as a just man can be our qualifications if we are looking for leaders that will really um, a leader whom we can really depend on so if we are looking for a leader we have to look at Jesus because we can see the qualifications of a good leader in the personhood of Jesus. In our first reading, it is said that it will come from the clan of David. And this was the first coming of Jesus. The first coming of Jesus was in, the, in, a, in a manger. A very simple coming. In, the second, in our second reading from the book of St. Paul to the death, in his letter to the Thessalonians, he said that Jesus will come again, together with his chosen ones. This time the coming of Jesus will be in glory. And this is the second coming of Jesus. So there are two comings. The first one, he already came. And the second one, we are still waiting for the second coming of Jesus. But there is the third coming that we must not... Um, the, this third coming is that Jesus comes to us through the Holy Eucharist. We might be waiting for the second coming of Jesus but we might forget that there is another important coming of Jesus. And this is, He comes to us, He gives Himself to us. 
in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We might be interested in waiting for the second coming, and yet we are not even interested in receiving Jesus in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Advent means to be awakened, to be awakened from sleep. Normally we are awakened, especially the old ones. We are, we are awakened from sleep during night time. And the word night means darkness, drunkenness, lewdness, and quarrels. See, he was, St. Paul was specifically speaking about the pagan world, whose life are all in darkness, in sin, in drunkenness, in lewdness, in quarrels, blinded by materialism, <coughs> persisting in falsehoods. And to rise is, according to St. Paul, is not to conform with the world. So the question is, during this time of pandemic, are we always awakened? You know, there is a tendency because we have been we have been struggling already for more than a year with this pandemic, and there is a tendency as to what the gospel was saying that we become drowsy, meaning to say we return to our own life. But that is really a great temptation. What is asked of us is that to always be awakened because we do not want that the day will catch us by surprise like a trap. Lastly, in our gospel, we heard about signs in the sky, calamities, and finally the return of Jesus in his second coming. While this is not yet happening, it is important that we rearrange our life and our priorities in life. Only a life of prayer can strengthen us during time of hardship. Another temptation is to lose hope in this time of pandemic. There are people who are really committing suicide, there are people who are losing their mind and losing their hope. But let a life of prayer sustain us. In this time of pandemic, it may be hard to say that God cares, but He cares. While He continues to give us life, we are given all the necessary time to prepare for His coming. Or our meeting with Him one day. Amen. Lord, in which we have participated, prophet us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. This afternoon, our uh, dear Consul General, has uh, made an announcement about uh, a big celebration that will take place on December 5 at the Sagrada Familia. 
in line with our 500 years of celebration of Christianity in the Philippines, as some government officials will be donating an image of Santo Nino at the Sagrada Familia, and they have already arrived at some uh, some images of the Santo Nino. And uh, on December 5 at the Sagrada Familia at 9 o'clock a.m., um, the main celebrant of the, of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is uh, our Papa Nunso Bernardino. He is a Filipino. It will be attended by some government officials coming from the Philippines. And uh, the, the Sagrada Familia are allowing 250 persons, Filipinos, you know, to join and to, uh, to attend the, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Um, but, uh Okay.